Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Streaming Alchemy Show. I'm John Mahoney, and on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft's team's ability to actually let you produce live events. But what makes this different and, and really significant is that you can use the same privacy settings, same scope settings that you have in Teams normally for chats and other types of file sharing when you stream these live events. So since we've already done a quick overview in a past episode of the interface for Teams, let me actually just jump right in and start to talk about how you would work with live events. So live events are actually set up the same way you'd set up regular meetings by going to the calendar. And if you see in the upper right-hand corner, it's something that says new meetings. But if you click this, you can actually schedule a meeting or you can set up a live event. And that's what we're going to do here. So when you click live event, you have all the abilities you'd normally have when you set up a meeting with a few more extras layered in to actually set it up as an interactive event. So the first thing is we're going to set up a title for this. So in this case, we'll just call this uh, a demo live meeting. So now that we have that set, you actually have the ability also to set a location. So in certain organizations, they actually have Microsoft Team rooms, which have all types of audio video baked into the infrastructure of the room. And you can actually select that room to reserve it. We don't have anything like that here. But the other thing we can do is we can actually set up and provide information about the event as well. So we do this, you can, we'll just say this is a demo event, but you actually can do this up nicely. You have the ability to change fonts, do you know anything specific around that. The other thing that we can do is we can actually invite presenters beyond, besides ourselves to participate in this live event meeting. So in this case, I am just going to add one of the people on our team, Matthew, and we're going to add him, and he will come in now as part of the event group as a presenter. So the way this works is when I set up an event, I will come in as the producer. So the producer can change times, can change descriptions. The presenters, uh, when you invite somebody, will just be able to become part of that event once it starts. So now that we have this set, we can start to set up some of the more interesting things that makes Teams live events unique. So the first one is live event permissioning. So there are three permission levels normally in Teams. You can do it to specific people or to groups. You can do it to your entire organization. So if you have this set up where everybody in your organization has an ID, anybody that wants to log in could watch the event. And you also have it so you could set it up for the public. We don't have that configured here. And to be honest, that probably doesn't make as much sense in most use cases as scoping it around a specific organization or team. So for us, we're going to go and do this for just the people in the Streaming Alchemy team here in, inside. Oh, would help if I spelt it right. So. Now, these are all, this is the group we have, the team we have set up for the Streaming Alchemy show. And so now they're added as the scope of the event that we're going to be streaming. Uh, so here's a few more things that are, are interesting and important. You have the ability to let everybody attending to record the event themselves. So they could have their own recorded copy, and we'd be fine with that. You can also get an engagement report after the event. Uh, and you can select that. Now, this engagement report will show you who was actually paying attention during the, the actual production of the event. So if they switched away and didn't have teams in the foreground to watch you, they you'd, you'd know that these people watched this much of the event. The other thing, which is really cool, is they have the ability to let you do Q&A. So much like you'd have comments in a, in a normal live stream, this gives you basically equivalent, a way for anybody watching to uh, ask questions and for you to respond as well. So that would be everything that you could do basically. 
But Teams also gives you the ability to use an external app or device to stream your production. So if we wanted to take and stream this using an RTMPS feed from a TriCast or OBS or vMix, uh, we could set up all the details here if we wanted to use this as part of our production. In this case, though, what we really want to do is we just want to use the webcam we have set up here on Teams. So with all of this set, I can actually go and just say schedule. So Teams is doing this thing in the background. And now uh, we actually have Teams set up for a specific time, 3.30 to 4 p.m. today. And, you know, we could just say, okay, I'll go in. But like most productions, you want to have the chance to jump in ahead of time and make sure everything is working. So that's something that you can do here in, uh, in Teams directly. So I have this link where I could just say, join. So as the show producer, I can start up the show. Uh, I'll leave my mic muted so we don't end up with any specific audio loops going on here, but I can just click join now. And it takes its time connecting. And so now what you see here is the interface for conducting the live stream. So you see I have my presenter here. Uh, which was, Matthew, this is just a looping video, since Matt's actually the technical director today running the switcher, and I have my own camera here as well. So the way this interface works is fairly primitive. What it lets you do is you have, essentially, they call it the queue, but it's what your preview window would be in a normal switcher. So I can select one of these cameras, so either one, uh, and that could be what we have in preview. And when I'm ready for that to go out to the audience, I can click the Send Live button. So very simple. What you don't get is this traditional swap between program and preview. So if I want to just toggle between two guests, I will have to continuously place the next guest in the queue. So the other thing that's really interesting about the way this works is that you can take and share things that are going on inside of your computer. So if you wanted to do a PowerPoint presentation or if I wanted to go through files, I can do all that. So if I come here and I take and share a PowerPoint, uh, let me just switch back now. So what you see now is I have another asset down here in my asset tray to share with my audience. So I could go in and now share this, and I could send this live. But the other thing that you can do, because for most presentations you typically have a speaker, is that I could add, uh, sorry, let me just do this. I could come in here and add myself as the presenter, and then add this content, the shared content here, as the presentation. And so now when I send that live, I actually have my video going on. So if you're looking in here and you can see here, I am giving this presentation and showing my video on the side. And you can just pop back and forth between these two modes where I have the split screen mode with a video and just the slide mode. And this is makes it very easy to give a presentation, go over financials, do anything where you want to share additional non-speaker information as part of your presentation. So this is great, and this is, you know, from a simplicity point of view, it's really very streamlined for how you'd, you'd want to do this. But there are a few other details, if you wanted to get into it, for things that you can do in addition to just the presentation. So the first thing you have is you have the ability to do uh, live Q&A. Uh, so this, this gives you any questions that come in. You can actually start this up and make this all happen. You have the ability to take meeting notes. So as this progresses, you can make notes for yourself. So if you're the producer, you can actually just go and capture these notes. But if uh, you're an audience member, you can also capture notes for yourself. And those you know, will be available to you as reference after the meeting. 
you also have the ability to do meeting chat. So everybody uh, that's a part of this inside of the production would be able to actually chat back and forth. So you could be sending messages to people that may be off camera if you needed to and have them respond and get ready. So it, it gives you a lot of flexibility there. One of the other things that's really cool though is that if I needed to bring in somebody ad hoc, like some sort of expert, I could just go in here and now invite somebody dynamically to join the meeting. So let me go here and we'll see if I can get Joe to join this meeting. So if you see here, I just invited Joe. And uh, so he's coming in here. So, okay, so I have Joe here now. So if I send Joe, I can put him in the preview and then send him live. So this is something now with, with Joe as part of this meeting, I can bring in anybody that I need dynamically, have them join the show, answer some questions, and then let them go. So this gives me a lot of after-the-fact flexibility, something where normally in a traditional environment you'd have everything set up in advance, but because Teams is designed around people being online all the time, you have the ability now to really do these types of ad hoc adds to a production, which would be more difficult under other conditions. So I can now stop sharing what I have on the screen, and I can just have the guests that are available here, and we can go back and do that. And anything that I want to do from this point on is really very streamlined, and it's just a replication of this. I can sh share other apps, bring on other guests. If I want to, though, as I'm doing this, uh, if I want to check because there may be technical issues, it also just gives you metrics about all your bandwidth connectivity, uh, what the cameras are operating at. So it actually has a nice little console in here that adds a little more detail to the technical side if you're bringing these guests on, something that can be very useful if you are having problems in advance. So this now, while I've done, done this as a run through, I actually haven't run the event yet. So if I actually wanted to bring this event live, this would be something where I could just click on the start button right here, and that would create the live event, and I could then start to stream this event to everybody that's in the group. But once you do, once you stream an event, it's one time. So when I click end, that event is done. So it's sort of marked on my calendar as a completed event, which is fine for this demo. But if I were doing this as part of a production, pre-production prep, I would never start the stream. I would just do everything as a rehearsal. Then I would leave the production and pick it up again when it was time to go live. So that really covers everything that you can do for live streaming in Teams. Keep in mind that a lot of the things you've seen here when we do this would not be available if you were streaming this from your TriCaster, OBS, vMix. Uh, that really replaces this whole interface with your standard streaming interface. That can be better if you want to do higher quality productions, lower thirds, other things on the screen that you want to present. But it, it basically limits you to just what you can produce yourself out, uh, on that external system. So this, as a quick, I want to get on, I want to have a quick presentation with a private group of people to share future product plans, financial, sales goals, any of that, this is a perfect fit for that. So when we're done, we can just click leave and we're out of it and back in Teams again to do any type of other collaboration we'd want to do. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, I know this was really a quick overview, but I thought what the capabilities inside of Teams, both for production collaboration as well as actual streaming to more restricted audiences in a privacy with some sort of privacy framework around that were definitely worth uh, covering here. So for our next show, we're actually going to be taking a look at two new PTZ Optics cameras. And these cameras have EPTZ, which basically allows you to take a fixed frame shot and then pan and zoom inside that shot. 
And with one of these cameras, it actually lets you stream both that full image as well as the pan and scan image simultaneously. So we'll be taking a look at both of these on our next show. Until then, stay safe, be well, take care.